than ever. February's homelessness figures broke new and shameful records, particularly for children in homelessness. Emergency department chaos leaves sick people delaying hospital visits, and workers' rights are still trailing comparable European countries. We continue to miss our climate targets, buying credits from other countries when we should be investing more in clean infrastructure, and so many basic public services remain out of reach. Childcare and creche places, home help hours, autism assessments, community policing. Our country has come far, and there's much about which we can and should be proud. But profound inequality remains, and Ireland is not working for far too many people. Our communities are held back by government parties which do not believe in harnessing the power of the state. And that is most true of the Fine Gael party. So a new nameplate on the door of the Taoiseach's office won't change that, because reliance on the private sector alone certainly won't change that. We heard Deputy Harris's address to his party's Ardesh on Saturday. And with just 50 weeks until a general election must be held, that speech presented an opportunity to set out a new programme for his party and indeed for the government. It was a long speech and in less than one year, Minister Harris did indeed promise to do more than his party has achieved in those eight wasted years of prosperity I referenced earlier. But his speech did not allay our concerns in Labour. There was a lot in, in it and over the weekend about a new energy, which sounds indeed like a Star Wars tagline. But where is that new energy, that new energy in reality, to deliver on housing, on healthcare, on childcare, on climate action and workers' rights, on disability rights, and all those areas which are crying out for change, where people are crying out for change? Where is the drive, the ambition, the courage to deliver the change that people really need, to deliver an Ireland that truly works? Let's take housing. Deputy Harris, conceded, Deputy Harris conceded that his government's targets are too low. And indeed, he called for 250,000 new builds in the next five years. I welcome that. We in Labour have been saying this for more than a year. And I wonder how Minister Harris's colleagues in government have felt about that call, given how quick many of them were to mock our call for 50,000 new builds per annum that we made last year. I don't want to say we told you so, but we do need, Minister, to see actual delivery of homes. It's not good enough to say that you're warming up, Minister Ryan, after so many years in government. And absent from that announcement was any real commitment to increase the state resourcing to ensure delivery of the supply of public housing, of social and affordable housing that people need across communities. Instead, we saw yet more reliance on private sector, the staple of the Fine Gael diet. Rather than restricting evictions, Minister Harris prefers more renters' credit. But what use to renters is getting less than one month's rent back when you live as so many of our constituents and so many people do in permanent fear of losing your home, permanent fear of eviction. And rather than state action, Minister Harris prefers more subsidies for developers, waiving development levies. When that approach has failed for the past eight years, how can it deliver change now? Instead of making homes more affordable, the reality is prices are at record highs. And now is not the time for the government to double down on bad policy because the housing disaster is the civil rights issue of this generation. And indeed, it's multi-generational. We all know this. It cuts across and affects every generation and every community. And on day one, the incoming Taoiseach should recognise that by committing to end no-fault evictions, to make renters safe, by regulating short-term lets, by transforming the Land Development Agency into a truly effective state construction company, and by delivering 50,000 new builds and 50,000 deep retrofits each year, with adequate provision within that of social and affordable homes. We can find enough construction workers to deliver this. But as a minister, the incoming Taoiseach would not even pay apprentices the minimum wage, let alone mount a proactive campaign to recruit construction workers. In the section of your address on climate, the incoming Taoiseach assured that Fine Gael would not lecture voters on climate action, perhaps a barb about some of his government colleagues. In fairness, he made good on that commitment right away because the section on climate action was dropped from the speech. No lecturing, not a word. And this does not bode well for commitment within government to a cleaner environment, for cheaper bills, better public transport or warmer homes. And indeed, the passage that was on the cutting room floor made no reference to really effective climate action measures, such as supports for retrofitting homes. The closest we saw was a promise to farmers that the government knows it cannot keep, a promise on nitrates derogation. And that irony will not be wasted on many farmers after two consecutive wet seasons due to climate change. 
Lofty promises devoid of substance are a feature of other areas too. Deputy Harris boasted of his party's achievements in healthcare, but that praise jars with the experiences of so many people who have told me about spending hours or even days on hospital trolleys. It jars with the experiences of healthcare staff running on empty, suffering the consequences of the HSE recruitment embargo and of low pay. And of course, it's contradicted by the Fine Gael pitting of employers against workers when it comes to policies like sick pay or your delaying of our bill to provide for reproductive health care leave following pregnancy loss. Because health is a holistic issue and we deserve a government which recognises that. We need to ensure that staffing emergency departments, creating healthy workplaces and implementation of disability rights are taken seriously by this government. It's welcome to see the incoming Taoiseach's commitment, indeed a recommitment, to ratifying the UNCRPD optional protocol. But we need need meaningful measures to make change for people's everyday lives, scrapping the green paper, ending the means test on the carer's allowance, ensuring assessments are available and that diagnosis leads to supports in the home or the classroom. And without that, promises to unblock the backlog in assessments are empty rhetoric. And in other areas of government policy, we need to go beyond rhetoric. We need to go beyond censure. We need to hear word, more than words that censure Netanyahu. This government needs to act with Spain to recognise Palestinian statehood, you need to pass the Occupied Territories Bill with the support of opposition. You need to create meaningful sanctions on the Israeli government to help bring about a ceasefire and an end to the suffering in Gaza. Deeds, not words. Today's vote, we know, is a foregone conclusion. But how the incoming Taoiseach uses his new position is key. This government cannot pretend that this is business as usual, because Ireland is not working for far too many. And the Labour Party will not support this cosmetic changeover. changeover. Ours is a vision for a fairer Ireland and a, more, and a more equal Ireland, supported by an interventionist state. We cannot be accomplices to a government which is, does not share our values of equality, solidarity and fairness. I do undertake, however, that we will continue to work constructively from opposition, to disagree agreeably, as they say. We did not, in fact, play populism on the vote of the order of business today. We will, of course, as a serious party, do all we can to hold this new Taoiseach and this government to account. But we will also commit to working with you where we can achieve common purpose and we will be honest and fair because our democracy is too precious to be denigrated in this House or on social media. So I'm asking the new Taoiseach to reciprocate that undertaking. Colleagues, there's less than a year to go and we will all speak more later on what the new Cabinet can and must do. But for now, my call to Deputy Harris is this. If a general election will not be called now, as it should be, then you must commit to serving the people in a way that matters and to letting these houses carry out our constitutional function. So I'm asking you to stop blocking opposition bills, to publish the meaningful policies we need on building homes, increasing hospital capacity, on disability rights and on welcoming refugees. Change is not easy, it takes courage, and if you won't go to the people, Deputy Harris and your colleagues, we hope you will act to deliver real change, because we need to see that change and we need to see an Ireland that works for all. Um, I want to start today by again wishing Leah Bradcar the very best in the future. A record of public service in this House that extends for nearly two decades, including 13 years in Cabinet and two terms of Taoiseach, has to be commended. It requires hard work, dedication, and many personal sacrifices. Those sacrifices were not just borne by the outgoing Taoiseach, but by his partner and his family, and I think it's important to acknowledge that and their contribution too. Today, the Dáil will elect Simon Harris as the third Taoiseach of this government. It's a job more demanding than most of us can imagine. And on a personal note, I'd like to wish him well as Taoiseach and in his new role as leader of Fine Gael. However, we are facing serious challenges as a country. And in order to address them, we need new ideas. For that, we need a new government. So today, the Social Democrats will not be supporting his nomination. We need to see a radical change in approach of the crisis <coughs> facing us in housing, healthcare, disability services, childcare, and climate action. The change that we need cannot be delivered by a Taoiseach from the same party, with the same programme for government, and the same policies. The issues we face and will continue to face will worsen until we elect a government with a fundamentally new approach. 
Ceann Corla, I want to start by welcoming the incoming Taoiseach's commitment to set up a new Cabinet Committee on Disability. A focus on disability is so desperately needed. Successive Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Green Party governments have left disability services threadbare, underfunded and understaffed. Disabled people and their families have to fight every step of the way for access to basic services. The reality is it's ruining people's lives. We've heard enough platitudes, we've heard enough vague commitments. We need a government that will provide the services that people are entitled to. Assessment of need, essential therapies, personal assistance hours, the list goes on and on and on. We need a government that recognises the cost of disability with a cost of disability payment. We need a government that will replace the personal transport schemes that Fine Gael abolished over a decade ago and promised to replace. Now, we need a government that will provide actual pay parity for Section 39 workers if we're to have any hope of staffing our children's disability network teams. And we need a firm commitment to naming the date for the long overdue ratification of the optional protocol. People's lives are being destroyed due to completely inadequate or non-existent services. Services that this government actually don't seem to believe they have an obligation to provide. And with that fundamentally damaging ideology at the heart of disability policy, I've come to the conclusion that the only thing that will improve the provision of disability services in this country is a change in government. But I hope that you will prove me wrong. The housing disaster is the biggest challenge facing this country. We need a government that will treat it as the national emergency that it is. People on average incomes have lost all hope that they will ever be able to buy a home like their parents did. The lives of over 500,000 adults still sleeping in their childhood bedrooms have been put on hold. We speak about this locked out generation a lot in this chamber and Simon Harris has spoken about him quite a lot himself over the last few days. Because we all recognise how disastrous that reality is for people's lives and for their mental health to have the absolute basics of adulthood just kept out of reach, unable to have privacy, to have independence, to feel any hope for a future for yourself in Ireland. How can anyone start a family when they're always a letter away from eviction? Given a few short weeks to pack up their belongings, all while struggling to find a new home in the middle of a housing crisis, a home they can afford to rent that's close enough to their workplace, to their children's school, to their own parents who provide the childcare that they can't access or can't afford. It's stressful, it's damaging, and it's preventable. Because there is another way. We could introduce a no-fault eviction ban to stem the tide of rising homelessness and provide some security for renters. We could introduce a three-year rent freeze so those struggling to pay rent have some relief and time to find their feet. We could stop the bulk buying of homes by investment funds so that first-time buyers are not bidding against billion euro funds. And crucially, we need to acknowledge that the developer-led model of housing dependent on the private sector for delivery has failed. We could address the affordability crisis at the heart of this housing emergency by delivering social and affordable homes at scale so that the dream of home ownership can be become a reality. All of this is achievable. Nobody is saying that it is easy, but none of the crises facing us in housing are insurmountable. We just need the political will and the determination to change course. The state needs to stop outsourcing its responsibilities to the private sector. Essential public services like housing, healthcare, disability services, childcare are fundamental human rights. They should be provided by the state and accessible to all, regardless of your income. Every party in this house signed up to a plan stating as much for the future of our health service. In 2017, when the incoming Taoiseach was health minister, there was cross-party support for the Sláinte Care plan, but implementation has been painfully slow. 
Nearly 900,000 patients are in waiting lists every day. Hundreds of people languish on hospital trolleys all over the country while children with scoliosis wait for years in agony for surgery. Providing quality, accessible and timely healthcare is a basic requirement of the state. But in the Midwest, the situation has deteriorated to the extent that people are actually afraid to go to the emergency department at University Hospital Limerick. This should not and cannot be tolerated. What changes are this government going to implement to make a real difference? What are they going to do in the next year that they haven't done in the last four? How can we rely on this government to deliver a crucial healthcare reform? When seven years into a 10 year plan for Slauncher Care, we are nowhere near where we should be. Kian Corla, too often this government has excelled at climate rhetoric but failed at climate action. We have a responsibility to farming communities, to coastal communities, to future generations to take steps that are ambitious enough to meet the enormous challenge ahead of us. But instead, we're missing our targets. The leader of the Green Party summed it up perfectly. We're only warming up and are on course to face up to eight billion euro in fines by 2030. Every second we wait to take action increases the existential threat and the costs that we face down the line. It increases the risk of floods, failed crops, coastal erosion and irreversible damages to our ecosystem. We need a government that will approach the climate action not as a burden but as an opportunity. We could have warmer homes, we could have pristine waters, we could protect and rejuvenate our biodiversity, we could become a net export of energy by the end of the decade, we could be held up as the example for the future of agriculture. We have the resources to make all of this happen and help those communities and industries that will be most impacted. This is why the Social Democrats want to see the budget surplus used to create a six billion euro climate transformation fund. This would include funding for rural communities for farmers to ensure a fair transition. Because change is coming and we have to embrace it. The approach of this government of leading farmers to a cliff edge before pushing them off is not just dishonest, it has been a disaster for the future of agriculture and for a natural environment. Kian Corla, the potential and desire for change in Ireland is huge. People know that we can do better. They are demanding we do better. But I don't believe that a better Ireland can be achieved with more of the same old approach that we've seen from Fine Gael for the last 13 years. Fine Gael has been in office for almost my entire adult life. The incoming Taoiseach has been in office for almost his entire adult life. Where is the new energy? Where is the new approach? Because honestly, I can't see it. The Social Democrats will not be supporting the nomination of Simon Harris today because we want a new approach. And for that, we need a change in government. Thank you, Deputy Kern. Uh, we move now to people before profit solidarity. And we're going to hear Deputy Richard Boyd Barrett sharing with Deputy Mick Barry. Fine Gael are putting a brave face on today's events, but the real background to the ascension to office of Simon Harris is a Taoiseach and one third of Fine Gael TDs abandoning the Fine Gael ship and being afraid to face the electorate in the next general election. And the reason they are abandoning the Fine Gael ship and don't want to face the electorate is because they know they have failed hundreds of thousands of people in this country on the most basic things of providing secure and affordable housing, of providing a decent health service that works, on protecting our children with special needs and those with disabilities uh, and providing the public services uh, that make life bearable for people 
and protect people from the crippling cost of living crisis that has been inflicted on them over the last number of years. I find it particularly remarkable that the outgoing Taoiseach has attempted to absolve himself from these failures and the reasons why he's abandoning ship by making reference to international uh, origins to the problems we face. That is really quite extraordinary. The reality is we are one of the wealthiest countries in the world where profits for corporations have gone through the roof in the period that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have been in government. Almost quadrupled since 2011. And in a wealthy country where profits are being raked in by the corporations, by the energy companies, by the corporate landlords and the vulture funds, you have left us with the worst housing and homelessness crisis the country has ever seen and it continues to get worse day in, day out. It is shameful that there are 4,000 children in homeless accommodation and that that number uh, continues to rise. It is absolutely shameful that in a country as wealthy as ours, a generation of young and working people are priced out of the possibility of ever owning their own home and for many of them cannot afford the utterly unaffordable rents and we are seeing the return of mass emigration. Young people coming out of the universities and colleges that Simon Harris has been in charge of leaving because they do not believe, they have no confidence that this government is capable of giving them a secure and affordable roof over their head. So the skills and the talents they have developed being taken elsewhere to other countries because they believe there is no future uh, for them. The cost of living crisis that Deputy uh, that Taoiseach Faradkar referred to saying the worst is over. Tell that to people who got their ESB and gas bills uh, in the early months of this year. Absolutely crucifying. Or mortgage interest uh, rate hikes that have seen people's mortgage interest payments uh, go up by hundreds of euros uh, every month. For many, absolutely uh, unsustainable. Or, of course, the profiteering of rents, uh, which are now in Dublin, two to two and a half thousand euro a month. Extraordinary. 24 or 30,000 euro a year on rent uh, on your after tax income. Unaffordable for the vast majority of uh, working people. Or the reference to special needs. All I am hearing at the moment in my clinic, and I've heard it around this doll over recent weeks. Uh, is children who can't get appointments with the Child and Disability Network teams, which are chronically uh, understaffed, completely under-resourced and understaffed uh, CAMS teams, schools that are actually seeing cuts in special education teaching uh, uh, resources, or who can't get uh, the funding uh, for autism classes uh, that they are actually uh, looking for. The failure to ratify the optional protocol for people with disabilities, the shocking fact that rather than give people rights, give people with disabilities and carers rights, they are means tested. Means tested and often denied uh, the uh, supports and the rights uh, that they deserve. And I have to say, I found it particularly shocking at the Ardesh at the weekend where there were references to Fine Gael going back to core values uh, and uh, back to basics. That should be a reason for people to be scared. Because Fine Gael's core values over the last 10 years are to back the corporations, to back the landlords, back the vulture funds, while working people get it in the neck 
uh, while uh, with they can't deliver affordable housing for people and when our health service uh, is crumbling. And the first sign of the, the first sign uh, of this the first sign of this is the the kite flying around the plan to renege on the promise to extend sick leave, sick leave next year for workers. So already the new Harris regime is suggesting that it's going to renege on a promise to give additional sick leave uh, to workers in order uh, to back the interests of big, big, big business. And then of course there was the standing ovation over the words Simon Harris used about being repulsed, rightly, at the actions of Israel in terms of their genocidal attack on the people of Palestine, but the same Ardesh voted heavily against the Occupied Territories Bill that would actually impose sanctions on Israel for its brutal and cruel treatment of the Palestinian people. Very lastly, Minister Harris, I was asked uh, from somebody from your constituency to mention the shameful decision for the mother and baby redress scheme to exclude the West Bank orphanage in Greystones in your constituency. Something uh, that they were recommended to be included in all the mother and baby reports and have been shamefully excluded and they asked me to take this day and this opportunity to ask you to address that utter wrong. Barry. Count Corlett. Deputy Harris has chosen a song from the 1970s as his new team song. Backman Turner Overdrives, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. It's a great song, but I can think of one or two other tunes from that decade that might be more appropriate. For example, I can think of The Who, Won't Get Fooled Again from 1971. It might sum up the mood of the electorate a little better, and it does have the closing lyric, Meet the New Boss, same as the old boss. More seriously, on March the 26, 2020, this doll gave a standing ovation to all of the frontline workers who were risking their lives for us as COVID struck. You yourself were caretaker Minister for Health at the time. Last Sunday week, Easter Sunday, the government cut the pay of public health workers, many of them nurses, who contacted, contracted COVID in those times and have suffered from it to this day, long COVID. Leo Varadkar was Taoiseach the day their pay was cut. You will be Taoiseach by this afternoon. So, are you going to reverse that pay cut? Or are you going to let it stand? Because I put it to you, if you do decide to let it stand, you're standing, starting off in your new job, standing over one of the most miserable actions taken by any Irish government in recent years. And I'll be awaiting your response on that one later today with interest. You project yourself as the great listener, but your track record of listening to trade unionists and to workers' concerns is actually very poor. Ambulance paramedics fighting union busting were forced into the first national ambulance strike in the history of this state on your watch as health minister. Nurses fighting for a decent pay increase were forced into only the second national nurses' strike in the history of the state. Now you seem to be flying kites about the possibility of delaying improvements to workers' sick leave entitlements. Try to do this, Minister, and you will meet a storm of opposition. This is a theme I intend to return to this evening. The country needs a general election, a radical change of direction. It is not to your credit that you are choosing to deny the people a general election, nor to the credit of those independent deputies who are assisting you in denying it. The shortest-lived Taoiseach in the history of this state was John Bruton. 924 days. Even if you manage to stretch this out until March of next year, I think you are going to be the new holder of that record. Thank you, Deputy. I'll conclude by saying the people will see that the new boss is the same as the old boss, and I definitely don't think that they're going to be fooled again. You might bring a turntable with you the next time. <laughs> um, we're going to the regional group, to Deputy Michael Lowry sharing with Deputy Pather Tobin and Deputy Matt Shanahan. Uh, Count Corla, I will be supporting the nomination of Minister Simon Harris for Taoiseach. I could join in the soundbite populist chorus of negativity. I could contend that everything in the country is a disaster and demand a uh, general election. That might make better headlines, but that's not my style of politics. There is no denying that we have serious problems in housing, health, and particularly at UHL and Limerick. 
the disability sector, family carers, agriculture and small business. There are many issues requiring very urgent attention and I don't see how any of these problems will be solved by putting them in cold storage for up to 10 months while we fight a general election and form a new government. I believe that politics is practical. It is about working together to improve the reality of everyday lives, about action and delivery and not empty outrage. Unlike like some, I do not believe that being an independent deputy means sitting on your hands, sniping, criticising and howling at the moon and achieving nothing. Adversarial debate is healthy, but I don't believe in slamming doors on the possibility of progress and the public good for the sake of maintaining a facade. Slamming a door leaves both sides isolated. I believe that there is more to be gained for my constituents by working with government ministers of whatever persuasion and their departments to achieve social justice and reward for work and enterprise. That has been my consistent approach. I am here to work for the small business owners who are struggling with spiralling costs. These are the risk takers, the entrepreneurs who contribute so much to wealth creation, to funding our social welfare system, to giving local employment. They need immediate, tangible support. I'm here to work for farmers who are literally bogged down not only by the weather, but by debt, bureaucracy and the challenge of change. These are the people who put food on our tables, support our economy, underpin our way of life. They don't need lip service, they need real solutions to their problems and urgent practical assistance. Lack of housing is the scourge of our time. And irrespective of who is in government, it will take several more years to catch up on the supply due to the failures of the past. And we cannot build houses for our people without a skilled workforce. The apprenticeship scheme implemented by Minister Harris is a real positive. The ETB training centre in Thurles is a model of excellence that should be expanded and replicated right across the country. The chaos in our national broadcaster must be brought under control. A new funding system is urgently required and should incorporate those in the sector who are presently excluded. Local broadcasters are the first source of information and discourse for rural Ireland. They should have a trusted place in national debate. They must be acknowledged, respected and financially supported. As Taoiseach elect, you have a short time to put your stamp on government. It is a daunting task. I wish you well and hope you can fulfil your ambition. Margaret Kent Corley. Simon Harris will break a few records today. A man who took his seat of the 15th count, a member of a political party that came third in the last general election, will become Taoiseach today. And the Taoiseach carousel continues in this, in this political bubble, uh, where we have the, the people of this republic continuously locked out of the decision-making process. And there's no doubt that Simon Harris is very good at spin. I've never seen anybody be able to distance themselves from themselves so well as he has done in the last number of weeks. He's flipped from a committed proponent of the current hate speech law to a critique of elements of it. He was a pro-life campaigner to the person who introduced that heartbreaking law. And he has uh, also uh, been the person who has become elevated now uh, to the position of Taoiseach, posing as a new broom. But the truth of the matter is, despite the fact that he is throwing promises around like confetti, he is the Varadkar continuity candidate. He has been a minister for eight years. He owns the highest homelessness numbers in the history of the state. He owns the highest house prices in the history of the state. He owns the highest rents in the history of this state. And I think he also personifies the South Dublin political bubble that can't see beyond the M50, where establishment TDs talk to themselves and the NGOs and ignore the people. I don't believe he is a man of convictions. I believe his motto is, there go my people, I must find out which way they're going and then I will lead them. Simon, Simon Harris has a record which I believe has cost this country dearly. He threatened striking nurses uh, with financial penalties. He announced free smear tests for women to save himself 
placing so much pressure on the system and leading to dangerous delays for women. In the early days of COVID, he refused to meet with the nursing home sector, um, which was the most vulnerable element of that crisis. Indeed, at that time, thousands of people were moved from hospitals into nursing homes. Many of them weren't tested, which seeded COVID right through the nursing home system and led to many deaths. During COVID, he cancelled cancer screening and reduced cancer services, leading to 100,000 fewer women screened for breast cancer and a tidal wave of more advanced cancers. And the billions of overspend in the National Children's Hospital was, and I quote Simon Harris, not a scandal. In 2017, he promised that no child would go beyond four months for an operation. A, P, uh, a PQ uh, from AIM2 has shown that 55 children just in Temple Street and Crummel alone are today waiting for more than a year for scoliosis surgery. Uh, and Simon Harris was the Minister for Justice for the first, uh, uh, of last, the first half of last year. And during that time, violent crimes increased, the number of Gardaí uh, increased, the number of Gardaí resigning and retiring increased, and the number of Gardaí being attacked increased as well. I do think this is a historic day. I think we're seeing the elevation of a caretaker Taoiseach, a Taoiseach who will have the record of having the shortest term in the history of the state. Thank you, Deputy Shanahan. Uh, Garamaga, Count Corla. Firstly, I want to wish fair winds uh, to Deputy Varadkar. While you got some big calls, right, the macro economy, the pandemic and Brexit, this has not been a government for all people, nor for all parts of Ireland. People have become divided during this government. It has pitched urban against rural, motorist against cyclist, agriculture against the environmentalist, house buyers against immigrants. The social contract for young people is burst. Expectations for housing, good work, services have all been knocked back. The Dublin Cork Cabinet have starved large swathes of Ireland of investment, of development, of economic hope for a better life. The borders, north-west, Midlands and my own region, the South East, have roared at Cabinet members to advance meaningful projects outside of their own patches. The administrative burden on our families, our farmers, our small business and home builders is absolutely out of control. As politics fails these people, their anger rises. It is a political mistake not to listen. Beyond reducing bureaucracy and supporting agriculture and enterprise, in my region, we have three tests for the new Taoiseach. 24-7, our airport and the SETU PPP and allied promised capital development. People are wondering in the southeast, how will our new teacher change things for us? As Minister for Health, we saw you spending on the Dublin Children's Hospital while failing to support capital spending at University Hospital Waterford. You are closely associated with the Department of Health's blocking of 24-7 cardiac care at UHW with the Shoddy Heritage Report. You know, we have still not seen the National Cardiac Review that you commissioned as Health Minister in 2017. As Minister for Higher Education, you are closely associated with preventing a full university in Waterford, forcing an underfunded merger between WIT and IT Carlo, and allowing unfettered spending and borrowing in the national university sector. Meanwhile, SETU Waterford has not seen a single new teaching building in over 20 years. You promised new disciplines, buildings, lectures, contracts, a borrowing framework and student accommodation, none of which have happened yet. The regional South East brain, brain drain has worsened. You are known for your abilities, Minister, to communicate, but talk without action remains just talk. Our late engagement over this vote has signalled to me that my priorities, actually my region, region's priorities, those being 24-7, the airport, the equitable university funding programme, supports to our agriculture and business sectors, although in your programme for government, are not fully on your radar. For that reason, alas, I cannot vote for you as Taoiseach today. And yet, I hope you are a successful Taoiseach, a Simon 2.0 that actually fixes things, delivers a form of leadership that renews hope in politics, delivers better, simpler services to all people in parts of this republic. But most of all, I hope your tenure signals that at last the winds of positive change for Waterford and the South East are coming. Such change is the acid test for me and my constituents that finally Cabinet is willing to listen and deliver for Waterford and the South East region. Thank you, Deputy Shanahan. Now the Rural Independent Group where Deputy Matthew McGrath is sharing with colleagues. Thank 
Deputy uh, yeah. Concorda, I do wish to propose an alternative to the, in this chamber here today in the name of Deputy uh, Michael Healy Ray, who has represented Kerry here in this chamber for many, many years, and uh, Kerry on Kerry County Council for many years before that. I believe he is well uh, capable of, of carrying out the task because he has the understanding of the people and, and like myself, he knows what the people need and what they're, what they're concerned about. I, I believe we're the only alternative group here in the Dáil for on many occasions we have proven that. And uh, I say, that, like, uh, I agree with Deputy Bork who said democracy shouldn't be taken for granted. And I agree with that. First of all, I want to wish uh, Deputy Radker well and good health uh, long into the future. Um, uh, I have to say that in the recent re referendum and canvassing uh, generally for, for the, our three uh, local election candidates in Kerry, I never see p people more angry or disillusioned. Farmers are being, they see themselves being vilified and targeted here every day. Even last year, uh, Minister Ryan ensured that the loose was uh, painted white, nine carriages, and advising people not to drink milk. I ask each and every one of you here today, what would we be like if our mothers didn't give us milk when we were growing up and, and, and after being born? Uh, ridiculous stuff. And like, like the suggestion that one car would do 30 people in the community and that should, we should uh, bring wolves into the countryside. That's what Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have supported that kind of carry on for the last uh, four, four to five years. Businesses are closing. In Killarney, another restaurant has closed today. And because of the VAT and, and the increase in the VAT and energy and rates cost. Housing. Uh, we know he have failed completely. The immigration uh, debacle, uh, where over two billion has been spent, and he even spent 860,000 euros to bring dogs and cats into the country uh, for, for, for these immigrants. Squandering money, and yet people are out in the morning paying 40%. Those working paying 40% tax and 4.5% USC charges down that. Health, uh, we can't even get doctors. You can get a VIT quicker into any farm than, than to get a, v, a, a doctor at, uh, in, in the evening or, or, or weekends. It's a sad state that sick people can't just get a, a doctor. We see in the recent referendum where, where there was a, a consensus between all the parties including Sinn Féin, uh, the, the, well, who seem to be overlapping and lining up to go with Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil. Are you going to give way to your Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin have been saying that, that uh, Deputy Harris isn't fit uh, to be Taoiseach. Why didn't he oppose him? One this year chance here today to oppose him. And I, I'm giving the independent deputies here in this, ch uh, in this chamber today if there's any scintilla of independence in here, now is the time to come out and vote for an independent uh, candidate for Taoiseach here today. This is your chance, but the most of you no, that say your independence, your Fine Gael attack, and there's no difference at all now for the people outside to look in here. Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael are the same. Yep. Sinn Féin are lining up to go with either of them. And the Greens. The Greens will be written off for, with the help of God. I rise today as well to um, second the nomination of counsel of Deputy Michael Hilly Ray because I believe he's a man who listens to the people. In politics since he was 10 years of age, canvassed in by-elections, and he aged up to Sadina. Listen to the people which you've lost, completely lost. And uh, we need to have a contest in this house. We can't just move around and have no election. And that's what we're, why we're doing this today. I want to say also to wish Leo Brad, um, Deputy Bradcock the best in his retirement. And as well, um, if Minister Harris, which he will be elected, to wish him well and his family and his wife and children as well. 
Well, we extend, as I said, uh, the, the sudden departure of outgoing teacher, uh, Deputy Bradker, the government's final year uh, create, uh, creates serious uh, instability and surrenders to the public service. It's akin to the captain of a ship being forced off when there's a shipwreck, which he's meant to say to less. Let's be clear, as, uh, min, uh, Deputy Har uh, Minister Harris and his few new Fine Gael ministers bring no novelty and no change to the current Fine Gael uh, government's legacy. The legacy will be mentioned for their deceit, incompetence, and decision to stop listening to the people. It has, it has uh, burdened the public with higher taxes and disregarded the devices of the ordinary people, both urban and rural. From the outset, the three-party coalition lacked the plan, a vision, and any bit of empathy with the people that elected them. The people voted in 2020 for change. They got no change. A cobbled together government by uh, uh, De Minister, Deputy Martin and Deputy uh, Radcliffe. De Deputy Martin was the architect because he didn't want to be the first Fianna Fáil Taoiseach, never, in, in, uh, ne a leader, never to be a and I say to you, Minister Harris, how can we have trust? I hold a letter here that you wrote to the pro-life campaign in 2011 in Wicklow. Dear pro-life campaign, I'm contesting the next election. I'm happy to, pro, pro, uh, to, to pro, uh, so proud to support you and an act of pro-life. In response to your questions, yes, if elected at all, I will oppose any legislation to introduce abortion in Ireland. And yes, I will support legislation that protects the human embryo and, and protects uh, um, children, babies at, at all costs. And the legislation you brought in, how can we trust in you? The legislation was the most vicious and rigorous and disgusting that ever happened. Your legacy in health, the children's hospital, you made the whole lot of it. The, the scoliosis, scoliosis promise to most fortunate people that were here a few weeks ago, that are waiting, you said, four months, that are waiting years languishing. Also, your attack, Fine Gael's attack on local government. You demolished local democracy. You uh, uh, pint set up Irish water, an unmitigated disaster. Many, many other. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Can't is the name of the game, but for Fine Fall in the beef barons, in, 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 the, in, in CU Hay, at Smith Roadstone. All those people, all the big monopolies then, are squeezing the lifeblood out of our communities. Not what the people of, of uh, Ireland give the life for here. So I say to you, it's a sad legacy. Moving the deck chairs on this uh, uh, ship tonight is not going to do anything else for anybody. So I say to you, call an election and go to the people and get a fresh mandate and do something for the people. Thank you, Kian Corla. I start by wishing a former Taoiseach Leo Varadka and uh, former Minister Simon Coveney the very best in their future. Uh, this will be the third Taoiseach since government was formed in 2020, and this in itself shows how dysfunctional this government has been in the last four years. The, this government lacks understanding, lacks the ability or hunger to look after the ordinary people. This government to date has lacked common sense, and the people of this country are sick to their teeth of this government. This sim the simple uh, way to uh, see how disconnected this government was with most of the opposition in the recent referendum where people spoke emphatically with an overwhelming majority of people rejecting Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil, the Green, Sinn Féin, Labour and Social De Democrats' plan to remove women from our constitution. But it is not this alone that has people angered. Look at our housing crisis, uh, which has ran out of all control and a government running along happy with this crisis of 14,000 homeless, many of them children, year in action for housing in our cities not allowing much needed development to build up uh, where infrastructures already are in place sees homelessness uh, numbers crisis getting worse by day. In our, in our countryside, between county development plans drawn up with a negative view to rural planning and another stumbling block of a planning regulator put in place by government has seen young people coming to me weekly in high numbers being refused planning um, and, and being refused a chance to get their lives together off the ground. These are people who have a sight from the parents, who have a mortgage sorted, and won't be any burden in the state, but are refused for one reason or another, adding to the homeless list and our housing crisis. Our health crisis in this country is nothing short of appalling, and was the cause of the last government collapsing, while you were Minister for Health, uh, Minister Harris. We have um, close to one million people on waiting lists in this island, people in dreadful pain, seeking hip or knee surgeries, or cataract surgeries to save their sight, and the list goes on and on. Thousands on hospital trolleys for days in some cases, seeking a bid, but left there in pain. These are the people who got up early in the morning in this country and worked hard and are left there uh, in their time of need. Look at agriculture in this country, uh, where farmers continuously tell me they are being treated as environmental terrorists, even that we have one of the best agricultural run farms in this country. Are you as teacher going to allow the Green Party continue to do absolute wreck to agriculture? That's a question you have to answer here today. Are you going to be a change and stand up for the people of this country? What Fine Gael did one time, 
They did one time stand up for the farmers of this country, but you've turned your back on them in recent years. And I'm asking you that here today. And there's a crisis, a crisis on the ground that, as we speak, and we're getting no assistance, no farmers getting any assistance from government. Farmers are suffering severe mental health with the weather and the wages at the moment. So I hope you'll announce a package this evening. Also the same with fisheries. You stood idly by year in, year out. As you, the only deal you got for fishermen in all that many years is a decommissioning deal Thank to you. get rid of Irish trawlers out of Irish waters. It's a scandalous situation. Small businesses, 13 to 9 percent, you raised the VAT from 9 to 13.5 percent. You're putting business, small businesses, cafe owners, restaurants, pubs out of business. And you don't care. I don't understand what kind of a government you are. And many more. Student accommodation, hate speech, all these uh, migration, all these issues need to be discussed in proper uh, teaching before anybody would support, and anybody that supports you here today, in my view, that and, and will lead to further closures of pubs, of cafes, are equally responsible Thank you, Deputy, please. Uh, for, for, for those closures in their own constituencies. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks, Cam. The independent independent group. Where Thanks, Deputy Ken, Joan Collins is sharing with Deputies Connolly, McNamara, Arkin and Fitzmaurice. Thank you. Um, there's been a lot of fanfare that this is a new start for Fine Gael and this government and the country. In reality, what we see is the same old, stale, out-of-touch political system that has been power in power since the foundation of the state. You can play political musical chairs, give everything a fresh look, but this is just two sides of the same coin. Another tea shop from Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, the parties that have led this country into crisis after crisis, a broken housing system with record homelessness, record house prices, record rent, continuation with no fault evictions and no end in sight, underfunded, understaffed health and public services, high levels of low pay and growing numbers of people in deprivation, at risk of poverty and inconsistent poverty. This is why, while the rich get richer, the top 1% have accumulated 70 times more wealth than the bottom half of this country since 2012, leaving the two rich, richest people in Ireland owning 5 billion more wealth than the bottom 50% combined. This is a fundamental issue. What nine decades of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil rule has left us with is a country for the rich. Taxes on Irish workers are 15% above the EU average, while we have one of the lowest corporation taxes in the world. Our employer's PRSI contribution is 66% below the EU average, and our taxes on wealth are less than half of most <coughs> EU countries. Nine decades of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have created a country where working class people pay high taxes for a failing public services while the rich pay low taxes and can afford the best private services. From talking to people in my constituency, I don't think anyone buys for one second that this is a new beginning. This is the same old out-of-touch government with the same old out-of-touch parties that created a country that is getting harder and harder to make a decent life. You created the housing crisis, the crisis in our public services and have stood over a massive transfer of wealth to the rich while deprivation and consistent poverty grows. We can no longer afford a political system that allows this to continue, while everyone else struggles to find homes, services and decent wages. We can no longer afford to have Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael in power. Today is about the politics, not about the personalities. This is why people want a general election. Many people want a general election now. It is why I'm not voting for the proposed Taoiseach or from the proposed nomination from the Rural Independents. Simon Harrison and Van Kayla Quiva, and Tishmahori Bart, and Mary, and Gassur Killian, and Sirsha, and Doubt, is privileged to be a man, and lost their rule in you, and for the year, and if I may not be a man, the horse ditch, but it is the policy, near level person. Today is a very important day, without a doubt, for the Fine Gael party and for your family, and it's an absolute privilege, and I welcome your family here. You will not be having my support based on the policies that your party and your colleagues have continued with for years, where you talk about collateral damage. And this was encapsulated lately for me by Professor John Fitzgerald, when he dealt with the, uh, Germany saying we had a very uh, a housing crisis. And Professor John Fitzgerald said they were simply jealous and our problems arose from a successful economy. And I think that's what you accept. 
the problems are collateral to an, a, a, a successful economy. And I fundamentally disagree with that. Today, as I speak, there are 13,841 children, uh, people and children homeless directly as a result of your policy. Today, yesterday in Galway, 71 people were on trolleys. Less than a year ago, the HICWA visited Galway and said when there were 25 on trolleys, it was grossly overcrowded. None of these policies happened by accident. They are the direct result of year government, continuous governments, relying on the market, commodifying everything, and having no sense whatsoever as to what a republic truly means and what public services truly mean, and what equality truly means. You're all waiting for the boats to rise with the tide. Nothing has changed as a result of COVID. Nothing has changed as a result of climate change, where we urgently require transformative change. They're not empty words. And when the former Taoiseach stands up and the Thornishta stands up today and talks about these problems being caused by outside events, you're totally wrong and refusing to accept or look in the mirror and realise they're directly arising from your policies. Thank you, Kevin Hurley. I'd like to begin by paying tribute to uh, Deputies Coveney and Varadkar and their contribution to Irish life uh, at some difficult junctures. Um, moving on to Deputy Harris, it's a motion of confidence in you as Taoiseach. Uh, over the weekend, you promised that you would have the back of farmers, but you have served in a government which has been on the back of farmers. Like many small business owners, the only thing you get from gov the only thing they get from government is a letter warning of new regulations threatening new fines. The cost of government in this state has ballooned since you entered cabinet in 2016. It was 68 billion then, it's 110 billion now. Can anybody in this state say that the services on which they rely have increased by that proportion, that they're getting much better services now than they did then? Can anybody say that the infrastructure on which they rely to get to work, to, to live, is improving by that magnitude? So where is the money going? It is simply unclear, because anybody who rings any government department now will be put on hold and will be almost certainly not get through to anybody. They simply won't get an answer. The civil service do a wonderful job sometimes, but they require leadership and they have become complacent and moribund under the lifetime of this government. Thank you. For that reason, I'm afraid I can't vote Can confidence in you. Minister. Minister, I cannot vote for you as Taoiseach, because after four years of this government and 13 years of Fine Gael in government, you have not delivered for the North West. Earlier, Taoiseach Varadkar, who I wish well in his retirement from office, spoke of global megatrends influencing outcomes. Well, in my view, the only way to counter those trends in the context of balanced regional development is to have systemic and substantial policy-driven change across all government departments. You have not done that, and so regions like the North West lag behind. You have not addressed or delivered housing <coughs> for the North West. CSO housing commitments figures show that in 2023, the four counties I represent, Sligo, Leitrim, North Roscommon and South Donegal, were in the bottom ten counties when it came to housing commencements on a per capita basis. You have not delivered on health, where trolley watch figures show that from 2011, when Fine Gael entered government, uh, the numbers on trolleys at Sligo University Hospital have increased by over 250 per cent, while the national increase is 50 per cent. The figures speak for themselves. You have not delivered on agriculture, where you were cheerleaders for the nature restoration law, without mitigating outcomes for the drained peatlands in the northwest and no ring-fenced funding. Finally, Minister, I fully recognise that today is a momentous day for for you and your family. And while I won't be voting for you as Taoiseach, on a personal level, I wish you and your family all that's good. 
On a personal level, first of all, uh, the outgoing Tisha Lear of Radcar and Minister Coveney, um, on your future, I want to wish you the best to look. Um, this is in personal towards the new Tisha, but I cannot support a government that you have a minister there that has gone out to Brussels and the Irish farmers under the nature restoration law are relying on Italy, they're relying on the Dutch, they're relying on several other countries and you won't listen to the Irish farmers here. And this government is supporting that. Minister, uh, or future Tisha, you also stated in Galway at the weekend, I saw on the headlines, that you have the back of rural Ireland. Well, you drove from Galway in your state car back to Dublin. When people in Roscommon, in Loch Fuinchina, 98, 92 year old, 87 year old, were, had their houses been flooded, are looking at water higher than their kitchens, and ye have not signed an emergency order to help those people. This is a problem not only in Roscommon, but it will be everywhere around the country. And you spoke in Galway about having the backs of farmers. It's a knife in the back that has been given to the farming community right around this country. And I cannot and will not support a government that is decimating parts of rural Ireland. You're, the best thing or the, the thing that ye have done most in rural Ireland is cause protest with basically not talking, not listening, not giving the services to the people that require it in rural Ireland. I, on a personal basis, I wish you luck, but I cannot support this government with what's going on, especially with the Green Party. Now, uh, Deputy Violet Ann Wynne, please. Karen Corla, I wish the incoming Taoiseach uh, the very best. The public want delivery, not an intent to deliver, not promises to deliver that are broken time and time again. They need delivery now that is real, that is tangible, that improves their lives, not make it worse. The reality is that so many right now are so busy trying to survive without access to vital services. They're trying to survive without a home. They have needed a government that will hear them so much that they respond effectively, not talk down to them as if they, the government, while I accept they sit in this very important building, this chamber is not the real world. So they need to stop assuming that they know much more and therefore they know better. This is not the case. Those who know best will always be those who are impacted and affected and they should always be front and centre. That is the duty of care that has been missed, not just in this dull term, but historically. Look, the reality is, is that the vast majority of the public watching today could care less about who sits in that chair. So long as they get the services and the supports that they need. Not a skirting around the edges, such as no referenda in sight for, to make housing a, a right for all. No legislation for the right to personal assistance hours and a centralised system. They need recognition of the hardship that they have suffered because that and what they need has not been delivered. We have needed a ban on no-fault evictions yesterday. That was not a big ask, especially considering that we are an outlier in Europe on this matter. A commitment finally to the reinstatement of Ennis Emergency Department, especially in light of the poor management of the so-called reconfiguration. I say that because the necessary and promised resources and funding was not delivered. Ratifying the optional protocol of the UNCRPD, which should have and could have been done on the same day as the already delayed ratification of the UNCRPD way back in 2018. No excuses, no delays. The the point that I fear that is being lost on government is the absolute importance and necessity for the public to be able to trust the government, trust the politicians and by extension trust government agencies. It is imperative well, to ensure there. social cohesion. It was interesting to hear that there is a level of trust in the coalition well, that has not translated to the general population. Will a new Taoiseach will, with time constraints and with a job of work to do in rebuilding their own party prioritise the best interests of the public? and prioritise integrity and okay. in politics. <laughs> A corra gushi and keshna gananam noig, dal erin, and chatla simon a harki, gana chapa egan ult dron or hishak. The chakli a tar haven at Irish Ganishin, a British ta. Ain ya ta nakaya, a British neil, the stolen good in kesh treche, votal.
Will members please take their designated seats? Designated seats, please. Nomination of Taoiseach. The question is that Doyle Aaron nominates Deputy Simon Harris for appointment by the President to be Taoiseach, and on that question a division has been challenged. Tellers Thaw, Deputy Hildegard Nocton and Deputy Cormac Devlin, Neil, Deputy Porrick McLaughlin and Deputy Matty McGrath. Deputy Thomas Byrne. Oh. Deputy Jackie Cahill. Oh. Deputy Dara Killeary. Oh. Deputy Jack Chambers. Oh. Deputy Niall Collins. Oh. Deputy Barry Cowan. Oh. Deputy Cahill Crow. Oh. Deputy Cormac Devlin. Oh. Deputy Stephen Donnelly. Oh. Deputy Joe Flaherty. Oh. Deputy Sean Fleming. Deputy Norma Foley, oh. Deputy Sean Hawhey, oh. Deputy John Lahart, oh. Deputy James Lawless, oh. Deputy Michal Martin, oh. Deputy Paul McAuliffe, oh. Deputy Charlie McConnellog, oh. Deputy Michael McGrath, oh. Deputy John McGuinness, oh. Deputy Andreas Moynihan, oh. Deputy Michael Moynihan, Deputy Jennifer Renan O'Connor, oh. Deputy Eamon O'Keefe, oh. Deputy Dara O'Brien, oh. Deputy Jim O'Callaghan, oh. Deputy James O'Connor, oh. Deputy Willie O'Dea, oh. Deputy Christopher O'Sullivan, oh. Deputy Porrick O'Sullivan, oh. Deputy Anne Rabbit, oh. Deputy Brendan Smith, oh. Deputy Neve Smith, Deputy Robert Troy. Oh. Deputy Colin Brophy. Oh. Deputy Richard Bruton. Oh. Deputy Colin Burke. Oh. Deputy Peter Burke. Oh. Deputy Kieran Cannon. Oh. Deputy Joe Carey. Deputy Jennifer Carroll McNeil. Oh. Deputy Simon Coveney. Deputy Michael Creed, oh. Deputy Alan Dillon, oh. Deputy Pascal Donoghue, oh. Deputy Bernard Durkin, oh. Deputy Damien English, oh. Deputy Alan Farrell, oh. Deputy Frankie Feehan, oh. Deputy Charles Flanagan, oh. Deputy Brendan Griffin, oh. Deputy Simon Harris, oh. Deputy Martin Hayden, Deputy Emer Higgins, oh. Deputy Heather Humphreys, oh. Deputy Paul Kyo, oh. Deputy Josepha Madigan, oh. Deputy Helen McEntee, oh. Deputy Joe McHugh, oh. Deputy Hildegard Nocton, oh. Deputy Kieran O'Donnell, oh. Deputy Patrick O'Donovan, oh. Deputy Fergus O'Dowd, oh. Deputy John Paul Phelan, Deputy Neil Richmond, Deputy Michael Ring, Deputy David Stanton, Deputy Leo Varadkar. Deputy Patrick Costello, Deputy Francis Noel Duffy, Deputy Nessa Hurrigan, Deputy Brian Ledden, Deputy Catherine Martin, Deputy Stephen Matthews, oh. Deputy Malcolm Noonan, oh. Deputy Marco Kahasik, oh. Deputy Joe O'Brien, oh. Deputy Roderick O'Gorman, oh. Deputy Eamon Ryan, oh. Deputy Oshin Smith, oh. Deputy Chris Andrews, yeah. Deputy John Brady, yeah. Deputy Martin Brown, Deputy Pat Buckley, Deputy Matt Carthy, Deputy Sirka Clark, 
Deputy Rose Conway Walsh. Deputy Rada Cronin. Deputy Sean Crow. Deputy David Cullinan. Deputy Pa Daly. Deputy Pierce Doherty. Deputy Paul Donnelly. Deputy Desi Ellis. Deputy Mairead Farrell. Deputy Kathleen Funchen. Deputy Thomas Gould. Deputy Johnny Gwerk. Deputy Martin Kenny. Deputy Claire Curran. Deputy Park McLaughlin. Deputy Mary Lou MacDonald. Deputy Denise Mitchell. Deputy Imelda Munster. Deputy Johnny Maitham. Deputy Ono Bren. Deputy Donnacho Leary. Deputy Rory O'Murku. Deputy Angus O'Snuddy. Deputy Louise O'Reilly. Deputy Darren O'Rourke. Deputy Morris Quinlevin. Deputy Patricia Ryan. Deputy Brian Stanley. Deputy Pauline Tully. Deputy Mark Ward. Deputy Vada Bacic. Deputy Brendan Howland. Deputy Alan Kelly. Deputy Jed Nash. Deputy Aon O'Rearthon. Deputy Sean Sherlock. Deputy Duncan Smith. Deputy Holly Kearns. Deputy Gary Gannon. Deputy Catherine Murphy. Deputy Keen O'Callaghan. Deputy Roisin Shortall. Deputy Jennifer Whitmore. Deputy Mick Barry. Deputy Richard Boyd Barrett. Deputy Jean O'Kenny. Deputy Paul Murphy. Deputy Breed Smith. Deputy Carl Berry. Deputy Sean Canny. Deputy Peter Fitzpatrick. Deputy Noel Grealish. Deputy Michael Lowry. Deputy Verona Murphy. Deputy Dennis Nocton. Deputy Matt Shanahan. Deputy Potter Tobin. Deputy Michael Collins. Deputy Danny Healy Ray. Deputy Michael Healy Ray. Deputy Matty McGrath. Deputy Carol Nolan. Deputy Richard O'Donoghue. Deputy Joan Collins. Deputy Catherine Connolly. Deputy Michael Fitzmaurice. Deputy Marion Harkin. Deputy Michael McNamara. Deputy Thomas Pringle. Deputy Mark McSharry. Deputy Violet Ann Wynn.
Nish Kuran Votal Shin that Doyle Aaron uh, nominates Deputy Simon Harris for appointment by the President to be Taoiseach. Result Ta 88, Neil 69. I confirm, therefore. Garavian, Marshin Gul and Chakta, Simon Harris, Ronaha, and Ekapaha, Eganochran, Marhishak. I just want to welcome the formally welcome the members of the Harris family to the Distinguished Visitors Gallery. You're all very welcome. believe that this uh, will be a memory that will be um, firmly uh, ensconced in the memories of Killian and uh, Searsha. Long way, may you remember this great achievement on the part of your dad. Now, <laughs> Tisha Collect, do you think you might be able to say a few words to us? Gervmagat can call a Gervmag with as October Quidvoti, we get the the Peter August Heather and Fuka Kinolcha, and I do accept this nomination to serve as Tishuk, and I commit to doing everything that I can to honour the trust that you have placed in me today. I want to begin by thanking my own party, Fine Gael, and also our partners in government, Fianna Fáil and the Green Party, for their votes, and also for the Independent TDs who supported my nomination here today. This is very much a partnership government, and I intend to lead it in the spirit of unity, a collaboration and mutual respect. Today I want to pay tribute to our outgoing Taoiseach, to my colleague, uh, to my friend, Deputy Leo Varadkar. The history books will absolutely record the incredible service that he did for our country in dealing with some of the biggest challenges of our time, most notably Brexit and the COVID-19 pandemic. But history will also record that he was a trailblazer as we broke free from some of the worst prejudices of our past and showing Ireland at its best to the world. Gormagas Leo. I also want to pay tribute to my friend and colleague Simon Coveney, who's stepping down as a minister after serving our country with distinction uh, in so many different roles over so many different years. In particular, I think any objective analysis will never forget, never forget, all that he did for our country during the darkest days of Brexit. And today we acknowledge that. We thank you for your contribution to Ireland, and I know it's a contribution you will continue. Today uh, is indeed a, a very special day for me. When I started campaigning on issues close to my heart and got involved in politics, I chose this life. Uh, but my family did not, they've been very patient today. Uh, but through every step of the journey, they have supported me uh, without question. I want to particularly thank my parents, Mary and Bart, who are here today. They have been my driving force, often making many personal sacrifices for their three children. I hope they can be proud today of their eldest son, because I absolutely know I would not be standing here were it not for them. I want to thank my sister Gemma and my brother Adam. They are my best friends and we are each other's biggest supporters. And I also want to thank my Nana, who is here with us today. My biggest thank you, thank you. My biggest thank you goes to my wife, Kiva, who is my rock and an incredible mother to our two beautiful children. And lastly, to my children, Saoirse and Killian, who mean the absolute world to me. I promise. <laughs> I promise being your dad will remain my most important job. <laughs> it is. Yeah. 
It is 13 years since I made my maiden speech in this chamber to nominate Enda Kenny as Taoiseach, someone who went on to fulfil the considerable faith that so many of us had in him, as he led a government that helped to rescue our economy and restored our economic sovereignty. Back then I reflected on what values I thought were needed for the job in hand. Integrity, honesty and a work rate which cannot be surpassed. As Taoiseach, I will demand of myself what I saw as so important then. And to return to the words I spoke that day, I promise to preside over a government committed to public service at a time when such commitment is so urgently required. I believed then that a Taoiseach should work every day to realise the hopes, dreams and aspirations of all our people. And I still do. So today, Ken Corla, I accept this new role in a spirit of humility, ready for the challenge and full of energy and determination about what can be achieved. As Taoiseach, I want to bring new ideas, a new energy, and I hope a new empathy to public life. But politics is never about the office holder. This is not about me. It is about all of us, all of us, working together to serve the people. We as a people, we as a country, have over the last 100 years worked tirelessly together to create our own future. Collectively, this country can and should be proud of the progress that it has made. The number of people with a job is higher than ever before. The number of people accessing education is amongst the highest in the European Union. But now is an opportune moment to build a new social contract, one which renews our promise as a republic, to create equality of opportunity, to support those who need the state the most, to protect our hard-earned economic success, to use its benefits to deliver tangible outcomes to society. Time is certainly short, and there is lots to do. Housing remains the greatest societal and economic challenge of our generation. Today I recommit to moving mountains to help build more homes and drive more home ownership. I will work tirelessly to support the delivery of Slauncher Care, and will prioritise the delivery of mental health services, and in a step change in how we care for our older people. And I mean this seriously. I want to work with colleagues across this House to deliver real and meaningful reform for people with disabilities. As Taoiseach, I want to see everyone reach their full potential. I want to help create an Ireland that drives innovation and creativity, an Ireland that is compassionate, tolerant and respectful, a country that gives every child an equal start in life, an Ireland that protects our children's future by acting decisively on the climate crisis, an Ireland that values community and rural and regional development. This is a time of great challenge. It's a time in the world where leadership matters. In Ukraine, we see brave and courageous people standing firm against unprovoked war and aggression. In Gaza, we are witnessing a humanitarian catastrophe and we are seeing innocent children, women and men being starved and slaughtered. We have not been silent on the unforgivable terrorist actions of Hamas on October the 7th, nor can we be silent on the disproportionate reaction of the Israeli government. And as a country, we will play our part in helping bring about ceasefire and a lasting peace. Later this week, I will travel to Brussels and deliver those messages to Europe on behalf of the Irish people. Ireland's position in Europe is vital to our economic and social success. It has in many ways now become a part of our national identity. Yesterday, I was honoured to join with government colleagues in meeting with the First and Deputy First Ministers of Northern Ireland at the North-South Ministerial Council. And I, as Taoiseach, I pledge to guard and honour my role as protector and guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement. We have so much more to achieve for all communities on this island, and I look forward to working very much with the Northern Ireland Executive, because Ireland must never take peace or freedom for granted. Our political history has been defined by our quest for freedom. Freedom of country, freedom of conscience, the freedom to achieve freedom. Today, in the 21st century, our destiny is to build on these achievements, to provide hope, to provide opportunity, to provide a better future for all. This must be our mission, our pledge to the generations to come. Whilst I am proudly the leader of Fine Gael, I will lead a coalition of three parties. And today, I sincerely promise to be a Taoiseach for all. No matter your political persuasion, I will work with you and for you and for the country that I know we all love. I will be a Taoiseach who will listen, and my message is simple. I want to work every day to improve the lives of all in this country. 
Fueled by hope and driven by a vision of a better Ireland, I will provide a new leadership and a new energy, and I intend to act decisively in the best interests of our people. Going back centuries, our shared history is more than simply a narrative of oppression and resistance and the courageous triumph over adversity. It is a story about belief in each other, of faith in the future. The Irish story is a story of hope. A spirit of optimism sustained us in the darkest of days. And today, once again, we must ensure it lights our way forward. Let us not make the mistake of giving in to pessimism and despair about our future. History has been written in Dáil Éireann so many times since January 1919. We can and must write it again by rising above partisan politics, by working together to solve the greatest challenges of our time. The people expect us to do more. We should demand of ourselves no less. Nishtan Dollar Fionri Gudi Lahur Teresha Kuik. Lahur Teresha Kuik. would be proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. For people to believe the spin from the government benches, they would have to suspend all connection with reality and lose any memory of people's lived experiences. Because on the things that really matter to workers and families, you have comprehensively failed and no amount of bragging or bluster will disguise that fact. A housing crisis, a health service that's crumbling, a cost of living crisis that pushes households to the brink. That's the reality. So you will forgive us, gentlemen, when people don't buy the fiction that you're spinning today. Don't buy a story that dresses up failure as progress. Hall Martin, you recall, said this government would be the government to fix housing, but it got worse. Then Leo Varadkar came along. He said he'd sort out housing, and it got worse again. And now we hear Simon Harris say he will fix housing once and for all. And frankly, the people brace themselves. So here we go again. And you pass the parcel with the keys to the Taoiseach's office one more time. But let's be very clear about what's happening today. This isn't about what's good for Ireland. This isn't about what's good for the people. It's about what's good for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's your century-old cosy club circling the wagons once again to cling to power at all costs. I believe the people of Ireland deserve so much better because this is a country full of talent, ideas and, yes, optimism. The people of Ireland have achieved incredible things, often against the odds. And the Irish people deserve an Ireland where opportunity and prosperity are open to everyone. An Ireland where everybody gets a fair go and nobody is left behind. And they deserve a government that matches this ambition. Now, you say that you want Simon Harris to be Taoiseach. If you really believe that, if you believe that your government has the support of the people, then you should go before the people and get that mandate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the reality is that the people must decide who leads. And you should call a general election. That's the reality of it. <coughs> Third time round, and with the benefit of hard experience, we can state very clearly what another Fine Gael Taoiseach and the continuation of this government will mean. It means the housing emergency and the scandal of homelessness will continue. 
The crisis in our hospitals, trolley counts, waiting lists will continue. Households under huge pressure just to get by. It means more of the same. That is what Deputy Harris offers and represents. More of the same. He sat at Cabinet for eight years, presiding over the very policies that have seen a collapse in home ownership, skyrocketing rents and our health service brought to its knees. Much has been said so far from the government benches about Deputy Harris, but it's interesting to note what hasn't been said and what has been conveniently forgotten. You see, not so long ago, Simon Harris was the Minister for Health. And on his watch, hospital overcrowding spun out of control, the trolley crisis escalated, and treatment waiting lists hit one million patients for the very first time. On his watch, the scandalous costs of the National Children's Hospital grew and grew again. And today, the most expensive hospital in the world has yet to open its doors and has yet to treat a single child. But perhaps those who remember Deputy Harris's term as Health Minister best are the families of children with scoliosis who were promised that they would not wait longer than four months for life-changing surgery, a promise that was disgracefully broken again and again. Fianna Fáil refused to vote confidence in Simon Harris as Minister for Health in 2020. It caused uh, an election, if you all recall. Today, they dutifully line up to vote him in as Taoiseach, joined at the hip by a group of independent TDs. Now, out there in the real world, the experience is that you fail. If you fail and fail again, you get your P45. However, in the world of this government, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and the Greens, it seems you can fail your way right to the very, very top. Since Simon Harris became Fine Gael leader, he's been telling people, we've got your back. This is said without a hint of irony, and it seems with not, not, no idea of just how hollow it rings. For adults, young adults forced to live in the box room of their parents' house into their 30s. For the mother and father at their wit's end battling for services for their child, for disability services, for mental health care. For the elderly man or woman who's worked hard all their life only to suffer the indignity of lying on a hospital trolley for days. For the stressed out couple watching every euro and deciding which bill to leave unpaid this month. Fine Gael have now been in power for 13 years and for 13 years you have shown us time and again whose backs you've got. Fine Gael has the backs of the vulture funds. Fine Gael has the backs of the rack renting corporate landlords. Fine Gael has the backs of the financial speculators and those at the top. That is the Fine Gael way. And today you propose more of the same. Today is proof positive that we need change like never before. We need a new direction. We need a new government that will put workers, families and community first. A new government with the determination to roll up its sleeves and get the work done to improve the lives of ordinary people. That's why we need a general election. Here, here. Because a better future is possible. A future where you can have a secure, affordable home, where you can see a doctor quickly when you're sick and access proper hospital care if you need it. A future where life is affordable, where your job provides a decent living and when you, where you can retire at 65 with your pension. A future where our young people get the chance they deserve at home, where they're not forced to emigrate for opportunity, where they can build a good and prosperous life here with their family and friends. That's what change looks like. That's the change that people want. That's the change we need. Our future can be defined by equality, prosperity, opportunity, by building a strong, modern, vibrant all-Ireland economy, by achieving energy independence and security, by the reunification of our country. None of this is beyond us. All of this is possible. All of this can be achieved, but it will not be achieved with Simon Harris as Taoiseach 
and it will not be achieved by this directionless government staggering on for another year with no objective other than to stay in power. To Simon Harris Marin Gaina Lishan May de Hui River, on Rud Derna Katod Tastalagdini, not Tishak Ella O Inagail, to Gergo, the old Tauhan Anish, to Real Tisnua Tastal Uan, to Ahru a Tastal Uan. Another Finnegale Tishak is the last thing that people need. We need a change of leadership. We need a change of government, and the people must have their say. They should decide who forms the next government. So the trip that will be made to, this afternoon to the Oris shouldn't be to seek appointment as Taoiseach. It should be to ask President Higgins to dissolve this stall and call a general election. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Debate on the nomination of a third Taoiseach in one Dáil term is unprecedented in Irish politics. And I want to start by repeating my personal good wishes to the outgoing Taoiseach Leo Varadkar on the next chapter of his life. I do acknowledge uh, former Taoiseach Varadkar has undoubtedly led the country through challenging times, through Brexit and Covid in particular. And I do also acknowledge, as you said earlier, uh, the need for courtesy and for respect in politics. And indeed, in that vein, I also extend my personal good wishes to the presumptive incoming Taoiseach, uh, Deputy Simon Harris. As Minister Harris, I think it's important that we're respectful in politics. And as Minister Harris has acknowledged, however, he has not much time to change the course of this government. I hope he has the courage to try to make that change. But unfortunately, from what we have heard so far, his elevation today will not deliver the change that we need. And that's why we in the Labour Party cannot support the Fine Gael nomination for Taoiseach. The appointment of another temporary Taoiseach by this coalition is just more superficial change, cosmetic change, not the radical change that people so badly need. That's why we have called for a general election now, not just a change of Taoiseach. Last count, Corla, Ireland is a country with impressive GDP. We have full employment and the public purse sees the benefit of that, reaping plentiful tax takes. Coming back from the darkness of global recession, those conditions have created a unique political opportunity and the pandemic response has shown us what the state can achieve, what can be done through public investment. But this potential has unfortunately not been followed through by this current government or indeed the previous government. And instead, after eight years of rule by Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, with or without the Greens, the housing crisis is worse than ever. February's homelessness figures broke new and shameful records, particularly for children in homelessness. Emergency department chaos leaves sick people delaying hospital visits, and workers' rights are still trailing comparable European countries. We continue to miss our climate targets, buying credits from other countries when we should be investing more in clean infrastructure, and so many basic public services remain out of reach. Childcare and creche places, home help hours, autism assessments, community policing. Our country has come far, and there's much about which we can and should be proud. But profound inequality remains, and Ireland is not working for far too many people. Our communities are held back by government parties which do not believe in harnessing the power of the state. And that is most true of the Fine Gael party. So a new nameplate on the door of the Taoiseach's office won't change that, because reliance on the private sector alone certainly won't change that. We heard Deputy Harris's address to his party's Ardèche on Saturday, and with just 50 weeks until a general election must be held, that speech presented an opportunity to set out a new programme for his party and indeed for the government. It was a long speech, and in less than one year, Minister Harris did indeed promise to do more than his party has achieved in those eight wasted years of prosperity I referenced earlier. But his speech did not allay our concerns in Labour. There was a lot in, in it and over the weekend about a new energy, which sounds indeed like a Star Wars tagline. But where is that new energy, that new energy in reality, to deliver 
on housing, on health care, on child care, on climate action and workers' rights, on disability rights, and all those areas which are crying out for change, where people are crying out for change. Where is the drive, the ambition, the courage to deliver the change that people really need, to deliver an Ireland that truly works? Let's take housing. Deputy Harris conceded, Deputy Harris conceded that his government's targets are too low. And indeed, he called for 250,000 new builds in the next five years. I welcome that. We in Labour have been saying this for more than a year. And I wonder how Minister Harris's colleagues in government have felt about that call, given how quick many of them were to mock our call for 50,000 new builds per annum that we made last year. I don't want to say we told you so, but we do need, Minister, to see actual delivery of homes. It's not good enough to say that you're warming up, Minister Ryan, after so many years in government. And absent from that announcement was any real commitment to increase the state resourcing, to ensure delivery of the supply of public housing, of social and affordable housing that people need across communities. Instead, we saw yet more reliance on private sector, the staple of the Fine Gael diet. Rather than restricting evictions, Minister Harris prefers more renters' credit. But what use to renters is getting less than one month's rent back when you live as so many of our constituents and so many people do in permanent fear of losing your home, permanent fear of eviction. And rather than state action, Minister Harris prefers more subsidies for developers, waiving development levies. When that approach has failed for the past eight years, how can it deliver change now? Instead of making homes more affordable, the reality is prices are at record highs. And now is not the time for the government to double down on bad policy because the housing disaster is the civil rights issue of this generation. And indeed, it's multi-generational. We all know this. It cuts across and affects every generation and every community. And on day one, the incoming Taoiseach should recognise that by committing to end no-fault evictions, to make renters safe, by regulating short-term lets, by transforming the Land Development Agency into a truly effective state construction company, and by delivering 50,000 new builds and 50,000 deep retrofits each year, with adequate provision within that of social and affordable homes. We can find enough construction workers to deliver this. But as a minister, the incoming Taoiseach would not even pay apprentices the minimum wage, let alone mount a proactive campaign to recruit construction workers. In the section of your address on climate, the incoming Taoiseach assured that Fine Gael would not lecture voters on climate action, perhaps a barb about some of his government colleagues. In fairness, he made good on that commitment right away because the section on climate action was dropped from the speech. No lecturing, not a word. And this does not bode well for commitment within government to a cleaner environment, for cheaper bills, better public transport or warmer homes. And indeed, the passage that was on the cutting room floor made no reference to really effective climate action measures, such as supports for retrofitting homes. The closest we saw was a promise to farmers that the government knows it cannot keep, a promise on nitrates derogation. And that irony will not be wasted on many farmers after two consecutive wet seasons due to climate change. Lofty promises, devoid of substance, are a feature of other areas too. Deputy Harris boasted of his party's achievements in health care, but that praise jars with the experiences of so many people who've told me about spending hours or even days on hospital trolleys. It jars with the experiences of health care staff running on empty, suffering the consequences of the HSE recruitment embargo and of low pay. And of course, it's contradicted by the Fine Gael pitting of employers against workers when it comes to policies like sick pay or your delaying of our bill to provide for reproductive health care leave following pregnancy loss. Because health is a holistic issue and we deserve a government which recognises that. We need to ensure that staffing emergency departments, creating healthy workplaces and implementation of disability rights are taken seriously by this government. It's welcome to see the incoming Taoiseach's commitment, indeed a recommitment, to ratifying the UNCRPD optional protocol. But we need meaningful measures to make change for people's everyday lives, scrapping the green paper, ending the means test on the carer's allowance, ensuring assessments are available and that diagnosis leads to supports in the home or the classroom. And without that that promises to unblock the backlog in assessments are empty rhetoric. And in other areas of government policy, we need to go beyond rhetoric. We need to go beyond censure. We need to hear word, more than words that censure Netanyahu. This government needs to act with Spain to recognise Palestinian statehood. You need to pass the Occupied Territories Bill with the support of opposition. You need to create meaningful sanctions on the Israeli government to help bring about a ceasefire and an end to the suffering in Gaza. Deeds, not words. 
Today's vote, we know, is a foregone conclusion, but how the incoming Taoiseach uses his new position is key. This government cannot pretend that this is business as usual, because Ireland is not working for far too many, and the Labour Party will not support this cosmetic changeover. changeover. Ours is a vision for a fairer Ireland and a, more, and a more equal Ireland, supported by an interventionist state. We cannot be accomplices to a government which does not share our values of equality, solidarity and fairness. I do undertake, however, that we will continue to work constructively from opposition, to disagree agreeably, as they say. We did not, in fact, play populism on the vote of the order of business today. We will, of course, as a serious party, do all we can to hold this new Taoiseach and this government to account. But we will also commit to working with you where we can achieve common purpose and we will be honest and fair because our democracy is too precious to be denigrated in this house or on social media. So I'm asking the new Taoiseach to reciprocate that undertaking. Colleagues, there's less than a year to go and we will all speak more later on what the new cabinet can and must do. But for now, my call to Deputy Harris is this. If a general election will not be called now, as it should be, then you must commit to serving the people in a way that matters and to letting these houses carry out our constitutional function. So I'm asking you to stop blocking opposition bills, to publish the meaningful policies we need on building homes, increasing hospital capacity, on disability rights and on welcoming refugees. Yeah. Change is not easy, it takes courage, and if you won't go to the people, Deputy Harris and your colleagues, we hope you will act to deliver real change, because we need to see that change and we need to see an Ireland that works for all. Um, I want to start today by again wishing Leah Bradcar the very best in the future. A record of public service in this House that extends for nearly two decades, including 13 years in Cabinet and two terms of Taoiseach, has to be commended. It requires hard work, dedication, and many personal sacrifices. Those sacrifices were not just borne by the outgoing Taoiseach, but by his partner and his family, and I think it's important to acknowledge that and their contribution too. Today, the Dáil will elect Simon Harris as the third Taoiseach of this government. It's a job more demanding than most of us can imagine. And on a personal note, I'd like to wish him well as Taoiseach and in his new role as leader of Fine Gael. However, we are facing serious challenges as a country. And in order to address them, we need new ideas. For that, we need a new government. So today, the Social Democrats will not be supporting his nomination. We need to see a radical change in approach of the crisis <coughs> facing us in housing, healthcare, disability services, childcare, and climate action. The change that we need cannot be delivered by a Taoiseach from the same party with the same programme for government and the same policies. The issues we face and will continue to face will worsen until we elect a government with a fundamentally new approach. Kian Korla, I want to start by welcoming the incoming Taoiseach's commitment to set up a new Cabinet Committee on Disability. A focus on disability is so desperately needed. Successive Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Green Party governments have left disability services threadbare underfunded and understaffed. Disabled people and their families have to fight every step of the way for access to basic services. The reality is it's ruining people's lives. We've heard enough platitudes. We've heard enough vague commitments. We need a government that will provide the services that people are entitled to. Assessment of need, essential therapies, personal assistance hours, the list goes on and on and on. We need a government that recognises the cost of disability with a cost of disability payment. We need a government that will replace the personal transport schemes that Fine Gael abolished over a decade ago and promised to replace. Now, we need a government that will provide actual pay parity for Section 39 workers if we're to have any hope of staffing our children's disability network teams. And we need a firm commitment to naming the date for the long overdue ratification of the optional protocol. People's lives are being destroyed due to completely inadequate or non-existent services. Services that this government actually don't seem to believe they have an obligation to provide. And with that fundamentally damaging ideology at the heart of disability policy, 
I've come to the conclusion that the only thing that will improve the provision of disability services in this country is a change in government. But I hope that you will prove me wrong. The housing disaster is the biggest challenge facing this country. We need a government that will treat it as the national emergency that it is. People on average incomes have lost all hope that they will ever be able to buy a home like their parents did. The lives of over 500,000 adults still sleeping in their childhood bedrooms have been put on hold. We speak about this locked out generation a lot in this chamber and Simon Harris has spoken about him quite a lot himself over the last few days. Because we all recognise how disastrous that reality is for people's lives and for their mental health. To have the absolute basics of adulthood just kept out of reach. Unable to have privacy, to have independence, to feel any hope for a future for yourself in Ireland. How can anyone start a family when they're always a letter away from eviction? Given a few short weeks to pack up their belongings, all while struggling to find a new home in the middle of a housing crisis. A home they can afford to rent that's close enough to their workplace, to their children's school, to their own parents who provide the childcare that they can't access or can't afford. It's stressful, it's damaging and it's preventable. Because there is another way. We could introduce a no-fault eviction ban to stem the tide of rising homelessness and provide some security for renters. We could introduce a three-year rent freeze so those struggling to pay rent have some relief and time to find their feet. We could stop the bulk buying of homes by investment funds so that first-time buyers are not bidding against billion euro funds. And crucially, we need to acknowledge that the developer-led model of housing dependent on the private sector for delivery has failed. We could address the affordability crisis at the heart of this housing emergency by delivering social and affordable homes at scale so that the dream of home ownership can be become a reality. All of this is achievable. Nobody is saying that it is easy, but none of the crises facing us in housing are insurmountable. We just need the political will and the determination to change course. The state needs to stop outsourcing its responsibilities to the private sector. Essential public services like housing, healthcare, disability services, childcare are fundamental human rights. They should be provided by the state and accessible to all regardless of your income. Every party in this house signed up to a plan stating as much for the future of our health service. In 2017, when the incoming Taoiseach was health minister, there was cross-party support for the Sláinte Care plan, but implementation has been painfully slow. Nearly 900,000 patients are in waiting lists every day. Hundreds of people languish on hospital trolleys all over the country while children with scoliosis wait for years in agony for surgery. Providing quality, accessible and timely health care is a basic requirement of the state. But in the Midwest, the situation has deteriorated to the extent that people are actually afraid to go to the emergency department at University Hospital Limerick. This should not and cannot be tolerated. What changes are this government going to implement to make a real difference? What are they going to do in the next year that they haven't done in the last four? How can we rely on this government to deliver a crucial health care reform? When seven years into a 10 year plan for Sláinte Care, we are nowhere near where we should be. Ceann Corla, too often this government has excelled at climate rhetoric but failed at climate action. We have a responsibility to farming communities, to coastal communities, to future generations to take steps that are ambitious enough to meet the enormous challenge ahead of us. But instead, we're missing our targets. The leader of the Green Party summed it up perfectly. We're only warming up. And are on course to face up to 8 billion euro in fines by 2030. Every second we wait to take action increases the existential threat and the costs that we face down the line. It increases the risk of floods, failed crops, coastal erosion and irreversible damages to our ecosystem. 
We need a government that will approach the climate action not as a burden, but as an opportunity. We could have warmer homes, we could have pristine waters, we could protect and rejuvenate our biodiversity, we could become a net export of energy by the end of the decade, we could be held up as the example for the future of agriculture. We have the resources to make all of this happen and help those communities and industries that will be most impacted. This is why the Social Democrats want to see the budget surplus used to create a 6 billion euro climate transformation fund. This would include funding for rural communities for farmers to ensure a fair transition. Because change is coming and we have to embrace it. The approach of this government of leading farmers to a cliff edge before pushing them off is not just dishonest, it has been a disaster for the future of agriculture and for a natural environment. Ken Corla, the potential and desire for change in Ireland is huge. People know that we can do better. They are demanding we do better. But I don't believe that a better Ireland can be achieved with more of the same old approach that we've seen from Fine Gael for the last 13 years. Fine Gael has been in office for almost my entire adult life. The incoming Taoiseach has been in office for almost his entire adult life. Where is the new energy? Where is the new approach? Because honestly, I can't see it. The Social Democrats will not be supporting the nomination of Simon Harris today because we want a new approach. And for that, we need a change in government. Thank you, Deputy Kern. Uh, we move now to people before profit solidarity. And we're going to hear Deputy Richard Boyd Barrett sharing with Deputy Mick Barry. Fine Gael are putting a brave face on today's events, but the real background to the ascension to office of Simon Harris is a Taoiseach and one third of Fine Gael TDs abandoning the Fine Gael ship and being afraid to face the electorate in the next general election. And the reason they are abandoning the Fine Gael ship and don't want to face the electorate is because they know they have failed hundreds of thousands of people in this country on the most basic things of providing secure and affordable housing, of providing a decent health service that works, on protecting our children with special needs and those with disabilities uh, and providing the public services uh, that make life bearable for people and protect people from the crippling cost of living crisis that has been inflicted on them over the last number of years. I find it particularly remarkable that the outgoing Taoiseach has attempted to absolve himself from these failures and the reasons why he's abandoning ship by making reference to international uh, origins to the problems we face. That is really quite extraordinary. The reality is we are one of the wealthiest countries in the world where profits for corporations have gone through the roof in the period that Fine Gael and Fine Fall have been in government. Almost quadrupled since 2011. And in a wealthy country where profits are being raked in by the corporations, by the energy companies, by the corporate landlords and the vulture funds, you have left us with the worst housing and homelessness crisis the country has ever seen and it continues to get worse day in, day out. It is shameful that there are 4,000 children in homeless accommodation and that that number uh, continues to rise. It is absolutely shameful that in a country as wealthy as ours, a generation of young and working people 
are priced out of the possibility of ever owning their own home and for many of them cannot afford the utterly unaffordable rents and we are seeing the return of mass emigration. Young people coming out of the universities and colleges that Simon Harris has been in charge of leaving because they do not believe, they have no confidence that this government is capable of giving them a secure and affordable roof over their head. So the skills and the talents they have developed being taken elsewhere to other countries because they believe there is no future uh, for them. The cost of living crisis that Deputy uh, that Taoiseach Faradkar referred to saying the worst is over. Tell that to people who got their ESB and gas bills uh, in the early months of this year. Absolutely crucifying or mortgage interest uh, rate hikes that have seen people's mortgage interest payments uh, go up by hundreds of euros uh, every month. For many, absolutely uh, unsustainable. Or, of course, the profiteering of rents, uh, which are now in Dublin, two to two and a half thousand euro a month. Extraordinary. 24 or 30,000 euro a year on rent uh, on your after-tax income. Unaffordable for the vast majority of uh, working people. Or the reference to special needs. All I am hearing at the moment in my clinic, and I've heard it around this doll over recent weeks, uh, is children who can't get appointments with the child and disability network teams which are chronically uh, understaffed, completely under-resourced and understaffed uh, CAMS teams, schools that are actually seeing cuts in special education teaching uh, uh, resources or who can't get uh, the funding uh, for autism classes uh, that they are actually uh, looking for. The failure to ratify the optional protocol for people with disabilities, the shocking fact that rather than give people rights, give people with disabilities and carers rights, they are means tested. Means tested and often denied uh, the uh, supports and the rights uh, that they deserve. And I have to say, I found it particularly shocking at the Ardesh at the weekend where there were references to Fine Gael going back to core values uh, and uh, back to basics. That should be a reason for people to be scared. Because Fine Gael's core values over the last 10 years are to back the corporations, to back the landlords, back the vulture funds, while working people get it in the neck, uh, while uh, we, they can't deliver affordable housing for people and when our health service uh, is crumbling. And the first sign of the, the first sign uh, of this, the first sign of this is the, the kite flying around the plan to renege on the promise to extend sick, le sick leave next year for workers. So already the new Harris regime is suggesting that it's going to renege on a promise to give additional sick leave uh, to workers in order uh, to back the interests of big, big, big business. And then, of course, there was the standing ovation over the words Simon Harris used about being repulsed, rightly, at the actions of Israel in terms of their genocidal attack on the people of Palestine, but the same Ardesh voted heavily against the Occupied Territories Bill that would actually impose sanctions on Israel for its brutal and cruel treatment of the Palestinian people. Very lastly, Minister Harris, I was asked uh, from somebody from your constituency to mention the shameful decision for the mother and baby redress scheme to exclude the West Bank orphanage in Greystones in your constituency. Something uh, that they were recommended to be included in all the mother and baby reports and have been shamefully excluded and they asked me to take this day and this opportunity to ask you to address that utter wrong. Deputy Harris has chosen a song from the 1970s as his new team song. 
Bachman Turner Overdrives, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. It's a great song, but I can think of one or two other tunes from that decade that might be more appropriate. For example, I can think of The Who, Won't Get Fooled Again, from 1971. It might sum up the mood of the electorate a little better, and it does have the closing lyric, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. More seriously, on March the 26, 2020, this doll gave a standing ovation to all of the frontline workers who were risking their lives for us as COVID struck. You yourself were caretaker Minister for Health at the time. Last Sunday week, Easter Sunday, the government cut the pay of public health workers, many of them nurses, who contacted, contracted COVID in those times and have suffered from it to this day, long COVID. Leo Varadkar was Taoiseach the day their pay was cut. You will be Taoiseach by this afternoon. So, are you going to reverse that pay cut? Or are you going to let it stand? Because I put it to you, if you do decide to let it stand, you are standing, starting off in your new job, standing over one of the most miserable actions taken by any Irish government in recent years. And I'll be awaiting your response on that one later today with interest. You project yourself as the great listener, but your track record of listening to trade unionists and to workers' concerns is actually very poor. Ambulance paramedics fighting union busting were forced into the first national ambulance strike in the history of this state on your watch as Health Minister. Nurses fighting for a decent pay increase were forced into only the second national nurses strike in the history of the state. Now you seem to be flying kites about the possibility of delaying improvements to workers' sick leave entitlements. Try to do this, Minister, and you will meet a storm of opposition. This is a theme I intend to return to this evening. The country needs a general election, a radical change of direction. It is not to your credit that you are choosing to deny the people a general election, nor to the credit of those independent deputies who are assisting you in denying it. The shortest-lived Taoiseach in the history of this state was John Bruton. 924 days. Even if you manage to stretch this out until March of next year, I think you are going to be the new holder of that record. Thank you, Deputy. I'll conclude by saying the people will see that the new boss is the same as the old boss, and I definitely don't think that they're going to be fooled again. You might bring a turntable with you the next time. Um, we're going to the regional group, to Deputy Michael Lowry sharing with Deputy Pather Tobin and Deputy Matt Shanahan. Uh, Count Corla, I will be supporting the nomination of Minister Simon Harris for Taoiseach. I could join in the soundbite populist chorus of negativity. I could contend that everything in the country is a disaster and demand a uh, general election. That might make better headlines, but that's not my style of politics. There is no denying that we have serious problems in housing, health, and particularly at UHL and Limerick the disability sector, family carers, agriculture and small business. There are many issues requiring very urgent attention, and I don't see how any of these problems will be solved by putting them in cold storage for up to 10 months while we fight a general election and form a new government. I believe that politics is practical. It is about working together to improve the reality of everyday lives, about action and delivery and not empty outrage. Unlike like some, I do not believe that being an independent deputy means sitting on your hands, sniping, criticising and howling at the moon and achieving nothing. Adversarial debate is healthy, but I don't believe in slamming doors on the possibility of progress and the public good for the sake of maintaining a facade. Slamming a door leaves both sides isolated. I believe that there is more to be gained for my constituents by working with government ministers of whatever persuasion and their departments to achieve social justice and reward for work and enterprise. That has been my consistent approach. I am here to work for the small business owners who are struggling with spiralling costs. These are the risk takers, the entrepreneurs who contribute so much to wealth creation, to funding our social welfare system, to giving local employment. They need immediate, tangible support. I'm here to work for farmers who are literally bogged down not only by the weather but by debt, bureaucracy and the challenge of change. These are the people who put food on our tables, support our economy, 
underpin our way of life. They don't need lip service. They need real solutions to their problems and urgent practical assistance. Lack of housing is the scourge of our time. And irrespective of who is in government, it will take several more years to catch up on the supply due to the failures of the past. And we cannot build houses for our people without a skilled workforce. The apprenticeship scheme implemented by Minister Harris is a real positive. The ETB training centre in Thurles is a model of excellence that should be expanded and replicated right across the country. The chaos in our national broadcaster must be brought under control. A new funding system is urgently required and should incorporate those in the sector who are presently excluded. Local broadcasters are the first source of information and discourse for rural Ireland. They should have a trusted place in national debate. They must be acknowledged, respected and financially supported. As Taoiseach elect, you have a short time to put your stamp on government. It is a daunting task. I wish you well and hope you can fulfil your ambition. Margaret the Cancorlia. Simon Harris will break a few records today. A man who took his seat of the 15th count, a member of a political party that came third in the last general election, will become Taoiseach today. And the Taoiseach carousel continues in this, in this political bubble, uh, where we have the, the people of this republic continuously locked out of the decision-making process. And there's no doubt that Simon Harris is very good at spin. I've never seen anybody be able to distance themselves from themselves so well as he has done in the last number of weeks. He's flipped from a committed proponent of the current hate speech law to a critique of elements of it. He was a pro-life campaigner to the person who introduced that heartbreaking law. And he has uh, also uh, been the person who has become elevated now uh, to the position of Taoiseach, posing as a new broom. 